Oh. There. Okay. Photo by Taboo of Augusta Machado. Okay. Wow, Jimmy Paul, Augusta Machado. Later, once it was acknowledged what AIDS was, I'm a very spiritual person, and I believe that you have to help your friends. If they're your friends, you help them. And I was not fearful. I didn't believe that I would get a disease just by helping friends. Jimmy Paul. Amazing. I was personally terrified. Augusta Machado. Everyone reacts in their own way. Not that I'm fearless. I just felt these people need help. People across the hall, they need help. They can't get their groceries. They can't keep their food in their stomach. They need toilet paper. Jimmy Paul. Tell me about Peter Huger. Just tell me a little bit about him as an artist and your friendship with him. When I met you and Ethel, I met Peter, and he was at the Pyramid Club, and I knew everybody. David Brinsenhoff, and he was photographing you guys. Augusta Machado. He was documenting downtown. Jimmy Paul. Yes. And I was so impressed to be in the same room with a genius like that. What was your friendship like with Peter Huger? What was it like working with him when he got sick? I don't know if you knew David Warnerovich, Augusta Machado. Well, yes, I met him and Paul Tech. Jimmy Paul, so tell us a little about that. Touch on that scene for us. Oh, dear. Boom. There's Peter Huger, self-portrait by Peter Huger. Mm. Paul Tech and Peter Huger, when they were like 17 or 18, they were the handsomest couple. Wherever their lives were, whatever their lives were before, when they connected and met, it was like kismet. I've, I've seen photographs of them in Key West, and Tennessee Williams just marveled at them, that youthful physicality. Jimmy Paul, mmm, pictures from that period are unbelievable. I got to see this photograph of Peter Huger in a jockstrap. <laughs> Boom. Young Peter. Uh, Boom. Dead Peter by David Warnerovich. This strapping strong man slowly diminished. His flesh was starting to fall off his skin and he had to rest all the time. He would ask me, am I going to die? And I said, no, Peter, when your time comes, you will pass. But for now, you're doing the best you can and we must keep our positivity and hope and faith alive. And various people did bring him special stones, healing stones of crystal and amulets, and other people and other religions would give him a crucifix or a star of David or some, or from some guru, some dried flowers and so forth. So next to his bed, he did have, he was accepting of these things, but it was difficult to help him to the bathroom because at a certain point, the bowels really didn't work and we were using diapers. Taboo. When he did die, were you in the hospital when he died? Augusta Machado. Yes. Taboo, were you there that day? Did you watch him die? Augusta Machado, I was there on the day of his death. It was Thanksgiving. And John Hayes and I were going to a Thanksgiving meal that a friend, the clamped, okay, that a friend was giving for six people who had AIDS. Jimmy Paul, oh my God, Augusta Machado. And so, when we stepped off the elevator, there in his small little sitting area was Nan Golden and a bunch of people, so bereft, and I thought, did he miss me? Did, me? did we miss? So I went to his room, because I used to give him a foot massage, because your nerve endings are in your feet, and it used to help relax or massage some of the organs, I felt. I entered, and I lifted up, his, up the sheet, and I was doing his feet, and while I was concentrating with sensitivity, you could feel things, I had a feeling of what Ethel was standing just a few feet from the bed, frozen in fear like a statue. And I thought, oh dear, what should I do? What should I socially do? Should I just stop and go over or not? But I continued the massage. Neil Greenberg, the dancer, choreographer, God bless him, came in and said, what are you doing, Augusto? And I said, I'm giving Peter a foot massage. And he said, why don't we give Peter a double whammy? Do you mind if I massage his other foot? And he did. So it lightened, lightened it with positivity. So he was doing one foot and I was doing one foot. And David Warnerovich came in and he glanced at Peter. Then he saw us and he gave me the, what are you guys doing? Taboo, was Peter dead? Augusto Machado, no. Taboo, he was still alive? Augusto Machado, he would die in a few hours later. This was on Thanksgiving day. And so David was bereft, but he wasn't quite sure what we were doing. But he didn't object, so we continued. Then he sort of left, because I was thinking the time, his timing was, well, when they're through, I'll have my private time. And when we were finished and Neil left, I kissed Peter's feet, and then I put the cloth over and went over to Ethel. She was staring into space, and I gave her a hug, 
and it was like hugging a statue because she was really in shock. Because she actually had this fantasy that I will share with everyone, is that she really believed somewhere she would take care of Peter and they would live as an artist couple, if not as lovers, as companions because of the sensitivities, sensibilities in the art. And so I said goodbye, and I went down to the First Avenue to this very difficult Thanksgiving meal with people. We tried to be a little light and cheerful, but with all the people at the table were ill, and we and we tried to eat and make a little lightness, and there was a phone call, and someone, it may be Nan, phoned for John Hayes at this number because he had left a number and said that during our little dinner, Peter had passed. <sighs> The length of time afterwards, I was very honored, along with Neil Greenberg, Vince Saletti, John Hayes, and I were pallbearers at this church of St. Anthony. For the simplicity of what Peter would want, he was in a pine box so that he would return to dust. And for all of us to lift this really light little wood coffin, reality was so startling and amazing for us to carry it to the church. Taboo. How many of these gay AIDS death funerals? Dot, dot, dot. Neil Greenberg by Peter Fugio. Uh, Augusta Machado. No, Tebu. You were watching your friends die of AIDS and helping them. Just list some of them. Ethel, John Brockmeyer, Augusta. Well, no, actually, I would feel uncomfortable listing the people because it's not just me. It was part of a community who were supportive. Tebu, we're not saying you're Clara Barton, Augusta Machado, or Florence Nightingale. I did have a nurse's outfit. Tabu, did you wear the nurse's, nurse's outfit when you did it? Augusta Machado, well, one of the people that I helped really preferred me in that little white outfit with the white cap, and so it became their, their movie of, they wanted some respect, and it was like I was a private nurse for them. And I could do bedpans, and Tabu, where'd you get the uniform? I found it in your closet. Augusto, by Tabu. Okay, almost done. <laughs> Augusta Machado in drag by Peter Huger. Ethel um. in drag by Peter Huger. Uh, Augusta Machado. No, no, no. I used it in a Chris, Chris Tanner play later. Taboo. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Could you please put this on? Augusta Machado. No, but each group person, I did take a course. The FI, at FIT, there was an AIDS group, but they had rules. If you're going to GMHC, and if you're going to be part of a support group, there are rules and so forth. I looked at the rules, and I couldn't abide by it. If you're helping someone, you should be on call 24-7, if available. And if, they, if there aren't any set hours a week that you get certain things, you did get what you could, and it was... A little too regimented, I felt, with friends that I could help. I mean, if at two in the morning you really needed someone to talk to or if they had soiled their bed or if they could get to the door, I would come and help them and then call in the morning after a couple hours. Could arrangements be made for him to be readmitted? And I say him because it was mainly all males from our community and it would be betraying the confidence of listing the names. They were in my building, on my block, all within the East Village. Augusta Machado by Frank Bellaney. Neil, Bring Neil Greenberg's boyfriend, by the way. Mm -hmm. Then you have a beautiful list. The photo credits, cover by Taboo, Augusto by Taboo, Peter by... Oh, God, you read it, we went along. Then we have this wonderful closing shot. It's uh, uh, Peter's grave with me and Scott Covert. Oh, I saw that when you posted Reflected. it. Yeah, I remember I when you posted it. I posted it. a little reflection. Yeah, yeah, I remember when you posted yeah, Scott it. Scott Covert's that. known for his grave rubbings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. I didn't get to put his grave rubbing painting in the... Because we it's due to financial obligations. But there's me... And Scott in front of Peter's grave. I believe it's upstate New York. Somewhere. 